Welcome to this Smartsheet Gantt chart demo. Today we are going to be looking at how you can create a Gantt chart in Smartsheet and how you can manage it and make it work for you. Now Gantt charts are great for planning and scheduling your projects and they are, com and they are particularly useful for simplifying a complex one. They can also show you the critical path of your project so you can see the tasks that are essential uh, for meeting your project schedule. So what I would like to do today is just show you exactly how to create a Gantt chart from scratch and then all of the different functionality you can use to make it more manageable. So the first thing you need to do is to create a project plan or a sheet that has this kind of data and information in. So I've got a, a column for tasks and I've set these up as, well, I've set up some parent and child relationships and so some kind of main tasks and then subtasks. You also need a column with a start date, a finish date, and then you will also need a predecessor and a duration column as well. The good thing is, if you don't create these yourself, then when you do set up the Gantt chart, then Smartsheet will do that for you, and I will show you that in a moment. Now, of course, you'll also want to make sure that these columns are in date format. So all you need to do, if you haven't done that already, is right-click on the column, edit the column properties, and change that to date. And of course, you'll need that for both the start and finish date. So at the moment, I'm working from a, an empty and blank project plan. We've, we haven't got any dates in here, um, but we'll be doing that. We'll be adding some dates as we go along, uh, and I'll show you how the Gantt chart works for those. So in order to create a Gantt chart, the first thing you will need to do is you will need to go up to the top, the taskbar here, and you will see grid view. Now, if you left click here, you basically want to click the Gantt view option. So left click here. And in doing so, the Gantt view will appear and it will appear on the right hand side of the screen. Now by default, it will take up about a, about a quarter of the screen, but you can change how much of the Gantt chart is shown by hovering over the edge, looking for this icon, left clicking and dragging left or right. Now, it helps to, to keep it, you know, not too far over your screen or otherwise you won't be able to see your, your kind of columns here. So you'll notice that for this particular Gantt chart, we haven't got one in place at the moment, so it's completely blank. Now to update your Gantt chart, you're going to need to add some dates. So what I'm going to do here is, um, Oh, I'm going to start adding the dates. But before I do, actually, I'm going to, to quickly set up um, the, the, the Gantt chart to, to work uh, in accordance with where all the columns were related to one another and work in accordance with one another. So what you want to do here is you want to click the edit project settings. So the only way this will be visible is in that Gantt view option. So click Gantt view. Then you want to click this cog. And then what you want to do here is ensure that dependencies are enabled and you just simply click this checkbox. Now, as you'll see, this little pop-up has said that they that Smartsheet has already automatically discovered that there's a predecessor column in existence. So what we can do is we can use that automatically for this functionality. So to do so, I'm going to press yes. And the same thing is going to happen for duration. And that's because I have those columns already in place. And then you just need to click once you've once you've got your columns, you then click OK. Now, assuming these these were not were not here. So assuming you're working from a sheet without these columns. So let me delete those off. Then when you enable dependencies, you will get a notification saying that duration and predecessor columns have been added to the sheet. Now that's great. That's going to make your Gantt chart work synergistically. Um, all the columns are going to update each other and it's going to, the data is going to be a lot more, much easier to, to kind of update and keep, keep um, accurate. So start with the dependencies enabled, click OK. 
Now I'm going to start to add some dates. So let's start with this subtask here and choose today's date. And I'm going to end it tomorrow. And you will see the Gantt chart start to populate. So the Gantt chart is fed from the date columns. Now I'm going to set the next subtask to a week from now. And I'm going to set the finish date to the day after. Now, as you'll see, this will update for you. But one of the benefits of working with the, the Gantt chart is that you can uh, you can change the you can change the dates by using it. So to do so, if you find your task, well, it was a subtask in this instance, you can extend the the length of the task within the Gantt view. And what you'll see is that changed the finish date of the task. At the same time, if I was to change this back to the day after, which I orig originally set it to, this will come back. So these work together, which is why it's, Smartsheet is very, very useful and powerful. Now, the next thing to, to quickly discuss here, and another key benefit of the tool, is that you can create dependencies between the different tasks. And to do so, you just need to look for this icon here. So when you hover over, you're looking for that icon, hold left, left click, and you want to drag to the start of the next task. And what that's going to do is that's going to set up a dependency. And if you, were, if you noticed, these dates updated accordingly. So if I, I'm not sure if I can take that off. To take that off, you need to remove the, the predecessor. So what the predecessor does, so when I set this up again, you will notice the predecessor column populate. Now what the predecessor column does is, it is, this is, is it, it's essentially showing the link between the other rows. So where it says 14 here, I'm in row 15 and 14 is where the predecessor lies. So what this is saying is that the task in row 15 can only com can only start when row 14 has completed. There is a dependency on that task. Now by default in Smartsheet, the dependency type is finish to start. So here we've got the row that we're talking about, the task name and the type of dependency that is established. But you can change the dependency type depending on how your project is, is to run. So for instance, let's change it to finish to finish. You can add the lag, so any days in between the, 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 in between the tasks. Then you hit OK. So let's, let's say two, for instance. Hit OK. Now you will see that this has changed the dependency type and the predecessor column has updated accordingly. I'm actually going to change that back because for this particular program, we want a finish to finish. And we don't want to lag, so I'm going to take that out as well. And you can see it's updated here. Now, another thing you can do to update the dates and make this kind of up the Gantt chart update automatically is you can use the duration column. So let's say let's take out the let's take out the everything we've got in place here. So I'm saying that today's date, 17th of March, is the start date. Well, if I put three days in here you will see that the end date has automatically updated for those three days and the Gantt chart has populated accordingly. If I was to put 10, 15, now when I put the, the dates here, so 19th, you will see the finish date update again. So it's a very quick way of updating your, your project plan and your Gantt, Gantt chart as well. I'm just going to create these dependencies here and I'm going to put this as uh, 3rd of April. Let's put this as the 3rd of April. So I've set up my dependencies. Now, if you want to see how a project is progressing, then you can also add this to your Gantt chart as well. And what you need to do is you need to insert a new column and we're going to call it percentage complete.
and you'll see this new column here. Now let's say that this task is 100%, this task is 75%, and this task is 35%. Now you'll see that this is not in the right format, so I just need to change the formatting at the top here to percentage. And let me put that in again. And you'll see it hasn't been reflected into the Gantt view. So in order to see that, you need to click the cog icon again. And in the option section, you want to specify the column of the percentage complete. So we've called that percentage complete. So that's here. Now, when I hit OK, you will see that it is the, the percentage complete is shown visually on the Gantt chart. So that can be really, really useful. Um, you can see that here. So that's 100%, that's 75%, and that is 35%. So if I update this here, you can see that that's shifted. So it's a really good way to visually seeing how much of a task is complete. Now, if you want to see the critical path of the project, then head into the Gantt view, ensure you've got a Gantt view created, and then you want to click this icon here, and this is show critical path. And what that's gonna do is that's, that is gonna show you all of the different, or the key tasks in, within this particular project that are required for successful completion. And you can toggle that on or off by left clicking on that button. You can also see the allocation of team members. So for this particular project, I've assigned myself for all of them, but you can also see the allocation of other team members by um, using the resource management button. And it, at the moment, it's not displaying. So you, you may need to go into your project settings to do so. So click the cog, click resource management, and you will need to add them here. And that will enable the button to show, and that will show you the breakdown per the different individual team members. And before I finish, I just wanted to quickly discuss the relationship between the parent and child tasks. So for this particular project, um, I've set this up with some, some different key project phases, milestones and subtasks. And so here is the pa parent uh, of the parent, and this is the, the child um, of this particular relationship. So as you'll see, um, this particular task rolls up into this ma major milestone. Um, now, to set this up as a milestone, you should enter the task duration as, or sorry, if you wanted to change a subtask to be a milestone, you can enter zero in duration. And you will see that reflected in the Gantt chart. So that is a milestone. So any milestone that you want to have, just put zero in duration. So we have two major milestones there. Now back to the parent-child relationship, the subtask will always roll up. So you'll see here that the start date, it will look for the first start dates it can find within the, the column and of the child tasks. So if I was to put in something earlier than the 17th, that will update here. At the same time, the finish will look for the last date within the column. So if I'm, if I put in, so it's the, th at the moment it is the first. So if I change that to the 30th of April, then that will update here. So it always takes the last, the last, um, date that it can find in the child tasks below and you won't be able to update these it will roll up automatically now if you did want to update these you would have to outdent and remove the subtask so at the moment we can see our, our Gantt Gantt view it's all set up it doesn't look particularly great due to the data I've added, added in but of course you can change that with these different columns now I hope that this Gantt chart demo was useful if you have any questions regarding the process, please do drop a comment down below. 
If you would like me to cover any other Smartsheet tutorials or instructions or any other help with, with Smartsheet, then also drop a comment down below and be sure to hit like and subscribe to be notified of when I release new videos just like this.